Something that you have to do fairly commonly in many programs is pick from a small set of different values. And the way that you do this properly in most languages is referred to as an enumeration. Now enumerations in Scala are actually handled a bit differently than many other languages, so it's worth showing you how they work and the fact that they use inheritance means that they belong in this playlist. So as an example of this, let's go ahead and we're going to create an object and we're going to call it street light color because it happens to be a, a good general example of where you would use enumerations. So street lights, I'm modeling them and of course at the simplest uh, implementation street lights have the possibility of being red, green, or yellow. So one way I could do this would be to define three constants inside of an object like this. Okay, so now my red, green, and yellow are there and inside of other code I could refer to streetlightcolor.red and get a zero. The problem is that these are of type int, which means that I could have a variable that is referring to these and it, I could set it equal to 99. Okay. Because the type is an int, there's nothing that prevents me from giving it any old int. And there's nothing that requires that it be a value of 0, 1, or 2, and that's a common bug. And so enumerations exist in order to prevent us from doing that. So that leads to the question, well, how should we do this in Scala? And the proper way to do this is to use the enumeration type. And we do that by saying that our object extends enumeration. Now you might not have realized that you can make an object also inherit from things. This is actually one of the reasons why singleton objects are significant in Scala. If you're coming from the Java world, you might feel like, well, we should just use static because static works very nicely. Maybe you think it's easier to work with, but static has fundamental limitations. It's not object oriented. Static methods, you can't do this type of extends, and that's an advantage of, of the singleton object declarations in Scala and companion objects. We can actually use them as objects and they can participate in our program in a proper object oriented way. So I've made the street light color extend enumeration. Now I want to create my values for red, green, and yellow. And all I have to do there is say that I declare a val. I'm going to declare these three and set them all to value. You should note there, this is just a shortcut syntax in Scala. You're allowed to do this anywhere. If I want to make A, B, and C and set them all to zero, I can just do that, separate them by commas. This thing value is part of enumeration. And now if you look at this, the type here, this is a streetlight color dot value. That is its type. And so I can't set it to 99. In fact, the values I can set it to are red, green, and yellow when it has that type so that I get something that is safer. And if I were to just go ahead and use this little bit, this really should probably be pulled into a separate file, but I think it's easier for you to follow if I put it inside of here. I'm going to make a private var, call it underscore color, and I need to make it be this type. Well, that type is streetlight color dot value. These are, that is the type of my uh, values I've created inside of the enumeration. I can make a method that is used to access those. And then I could have, say, another method to cycle this light. So when this is called, it moves from one color to the next. And what that does depends upon the current settings. So we're going to match on our current color. Now, I want to be able to type just like that. So red would turn underscore color to green because after light has been red, it changes to green. The problem is that these things are inside of an object and at least 
right now I would need to prefix them with their full name. Well, we've seen before, how do you get away from prefixing something with its full name? You use an import, and we can do that here. So a lot of times when you are going to use enumerations, there's a good chance that you will wind up having an import so that you can use the shortened names. So by importing streetlightcolor.underscore, I can now say things in the shortened form that I want. Red goes to green, green goes to yellow, and yellow goes to red. And there we go. Note that I'm using this match as a statement. It occurs to me that it might actually be interesting to use it as an expression. And if I were going to do that, I would make this change. So I'm going to set color to a match on the color. It gives me back, if it's currently red, it'll give me back green, etc. And once again, this is type safe because I can't set color to something else. Let's just say I did believe it was possible to do something else here. This winds up being a type error because I can't use the string bad for my color. My color has to have the type of streetlight color dot value. So the type checker now can do its checks for us and this is how you should go about in your programs making enumerations when you have small sets of different values.